Here we're going to graph the cosine function, and I'd like you to first please review the video, the graph of sine. So we're going to graph the cosine function very similar to how we graph the sine function. And that approach is by starting with a circle and looking at the values of cosine on the circle and then graphing the function down here. So uh, what we do is remember, recall from the video, that we uh, start with a unit circle. So this point on the unit circle is the point 1, 0. And this point would be the point 0, 1. And this point over here would be the point uh, x is negative 1 and y is 0. And then here the point would be x is 0 and y is negative 1. Okay. So remember, um, we think about different angles and then figure out what cosine of, is of those angles. And we know that cosine is defined to be, of any angle, it's always x divided by r. And we're using r to be 1, right? We're using the unit circle. Okay, so let's think about an angle of 0 degrees or 0 radians. When the angle is 0 radians, well, you're right here, right? That is, uh, the x-coordinate is 1 and r is 1. So we see right away that cosine of 0 is 1. So if this is 0 degrees, cosine of 0 is 1. Okay, so we have one point so far on our graph. And now let's think about the angle pi over 2. Well, that's 90 degrees, right? So that's up here. And x is 0, and r is still 1. So 0 divided by 1 is 0. So cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And going to pi, the x-coordinate is negative 1, and r is 1. So negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1. So we're right here. And then going on to 3 pi over 2, so all the way over here, the x-coordinate is 0 r is 1, so we get 0 divided by 1, which is 0 again. And then finally at 2 pi, all the way around, we're back to the value of 1. Okay, now let's look at a few other values. So this was 90 degrees, so if we divide that into thirds, right, if we take the first third, that would be pi over 6, and that's 30 degrees. And if I draw that in here, th the angle of 30 degrees might look like that, okay? Now if I draw in my right triangle, which we like to do, I created a 90 degree angle right there. This is 30 degrees, and that's 60 degrees. Now if the hypotenuse is of length 1, which it is, the, this length, right, this is the long side of the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So the x coordinate would be root 3 over 2, and the, and the y coordinate would be 1 half. So if we look at cosine of 30 degrees, which is x over r, it's root 3 over 2 over 1. So that's a little less than 1. So it's maybe right here. So at 30 degrees, we're a little less than 1. Maybe right in there. Okay? And now let's look at another angle. How about 60 degrees? So that would be pi over 3. And let's draw in 60 degrees as well. Like so. And I draw in that right triangle. and that would be 90 degrees. Now the reference angle here is 60, and this angle is 30. So this point would be, well, the x-coordinate is now the small value, right? So it's 1 half, and the y-coordinate is root 3 over 2. But for our purposes, we, we're after cosine, right? So it's x over r. So it's 1 half divided by 1, which is 1 half. So at 60 degrees, we're at 1 half, like so. Okay, so we can keep doing that, keep getting more and more values. Now what you find is once the angle gets beyond pi over 2, that is once you rotate beyond pi over 2, what happens to the x-coordinate? Well, everywhere in, in quadrants 2 and 3, do you see the x-coordinates of all these points would be negative? And that's what you can see here, right? Cosine becomes negative between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So cosine is negative all the way here, from pi over 2 all the way to 3 pi over 2. And then once you're beyond 3 pi over 2, cosine is positive again, and that's what's happening here. It's positive again once you're beyond 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. And the same thing going the other way when the angles are negative, right? Let's go from 0 to negative pi over 2. Well, going in the negative direction would be like this, and the x-coordinates are positive all the way until you get to 0. So the x-coordinate cosine is going to look like this, right? All the x-coordinates are negative. So we're going to make our way all the way down to 0. 
Okay, so if we graph this in, if we graph in um, what you know, fill in more and more points, and then graph in the resulting curve, we're going to get something like this. Okay, so we get this wave-like behavior. Now it keeps going, right? I drew in part of it, but it keeps doing. It keeps giving like a wave-like shape, right, in both directions. It goes on forever, and so what we see is that we have one cycle. So one cycle from zero to two pi. Now once by one cycle, all I mean is we're going from a top to something low, right? A high point to a low and then back to a high point. And that's actually the, right there, that's the period of um, cosine, it's two pi. So anytime you travel through an angle of two pi, cosine begins repeating. And we can also see that the, the domain of this function would be all real numbers. That is, you can plug in any angle you want. And likewise, the range, well, we can go all the way down to negative one and then all the way up to positive one included. Okay, so this would be the basic graph of cosine. And remember, cosine is basically tracking what's happening to the x-coordinate, where sine is basically tracking what happens to the y-coordinate. So we're gonna see in future videos that you can take the basic graphs, the basic uh, graphs of the trig functions and uh, have transformations of them, including different types of shifts. Okay, we'll see that in uh, future videos. Until next time.